please give a warm welcome to Scott Rao. Thank you. Uh, by a show of hands, how many people here have used a refractometer before? Okay. Um, for the people who haven't, I just want to give a brief rundown as to what it is, what it does, and then we'll get into this. Um, so it's a really simple device. Uh, all it does is tell you the strength of your coffee. And it measures the coffee strength in something called total dissolved solids, or TDS. And so for instance, if you brew an espresso, it might say something like 10 or 11 percent. And what that means is that your espresso, if it's 10 percent, it's 10 percent coffee solids were dissolved in your brew, and the other 90 percent pretty much is, is water. So a filter coffee might measure something like 1.4%. So you've got about 98.6% water, 1.4% coffee stuff. So <clears throat> it's nice to know the strength of your brew, but that's, that's not really the point. The point is that if you weigh the grounds that you use and you weigh the brew that you make, and then you also know your TDS, you can then calculate the extraction. And the extraction means what percentage of the coffee grounds weight ended up in the cup. And this is important because nothing is better correlated with flavor than extraction level. Now, that's not to say that two cups at 19% taste identical, but it's, uh, it's a very critical number in trying to figure out how a coffee might taste. And if you do a good job of extracting from the coffee grounds uniformly, and you get 19 at a certain temperature, and then a week from now you do the same thing and you get 19 at that temperature, you can rest assured the coffees are gonna taste incredibly similar. So uh, the point of the refractometer is to ultimately to tell you how much did you extract, and if you measure thousands of brews over time and you taste them, you will start noticing the correlation with flavor and extraction. And eventually you get to the point where when you're familiar with a grinder, you can taste a coffee out of it and you can say, ah, oh, this is about 19.5%. And, and that's very powerful because when you're a barista and you, you know those numbers, you know how they taste, um, then situations will arise, whether you're working on different equipment, uh, whether, um, you know, you're using a new coffee or whatever, like having that data point and that relationship in your, in your experience really helps you predict what will happen and it helps you diagnose problems that may have happened. So when the refractometer for coffee first came out, um, the um, reception from the coffee industry was rather mixed. A lot of people um, were angered by it. A lot of people felt threatened by it. Uh, a lot of people just said things like, ah, oh, you know, uh, why do I need a machine to tell me when my coffee is good? and things like that, and I understand that perspective. Um, the point is that you know, uh, it's just a tool. And like many tools, uh, if you use it wisely, it makes you better, it makes you more consistent. Sometimes it makes things a lot easier. So it's not there to dictate to you, it's there to supplement your experience and your knowledge in a way that uh, makes you ultimately better at your craft. So if you're someone who's used a dozen grinders and you've measured and tasted 5,000 different coffees with those grinders, and then you go and you get this new experience, like you have this awesome rich background of, of numbers and flavors and grinders and experience that you can sort of all wrap together and sort of immediately you'll say, oh, I know what I need to do to make this better. I know I need to go in this direction, that kind of thing. And, and that's pretty powerful. So um, if uh, a lot of people get refractometers, they get very hooked on numbers and they actually forget that they should taste the coffee almost. And, and that's one extreme. And the other extreme is the people who think that measurement is worthless. So, but I think, I think you have to accept that uh, both the tasting and the measurement are both important. So uh, if, you, if you taste all the time and you never measure, um, it's a little bit blind because uh, as I'll show you in a minute, you might taste the coffee and you might think it's good and you might not be realizing how much better it could have been. And the refractometer can help you with that. Likewise, if you get hooked on the measurement and you forget that the taste is what matters in the end, um, it's a little bit artless. Like then you get to become this robot and sometimes you miss the, miss the sweet spots and the really beautiful things in the coffee because you just think, oh, this number has to be right. So um, let's say you're a barista, you come into a cafe in the morning and you dial in your espresso machine. Now let's say that uh, you pull a few shots and <clears throat> your coffee is a little bit uh, flat and woody, maybe flat and dull. So if you look at this graph at that little valley where it says flat and dull, let's say you didn't measure, but let's just say that I tell you that that extraction was about 17%, which is often with a lot of grinders a very kind of flat zone. Okay. Um, now, you're the barista and you say, ah, I need to, I could change my dose, I could change my grind, I could change the amount of water. And you make a decision, and that decision happens to send you up towards 15 to 16%. So you're basically, maybe you're grinding coarser, or maybe you're running less water through the grounds. And you think, ah, this tastes light and fruity, I like this. You kind of pat yourself on the back, 
You open the shop and you think you've done a good job. What you may not know is that extraction, quality changes along that sort of extraction line, they're not linear. So it could be really good at 15 and a half and it can get really dull at 17. And if you keep going finer, it could actually get great at 19 and a half. But if you never measure, you'll never know that map. And so it's like, I think everybody before measurement existed was a little confused about this and didn't really necessarily realize that this thing that I call the double hump existed. I think a few people did, but it was more like we kind of knew it existed, but we weren't really sure what it was and where it was and such. So <clears throat> that same barista had this person happen to have chosen a finer grind or running more water through the grounds, possibly could have ended up at a much better shot, but this person, he had, he had no idea. So this is where measurements can become really helpful because when you do it enough, kind of know this pattern, and then, thank you, by the way. Very dramatic moment, okay. So, um, <clears throat> where were we? Okay, so if you measure a lot, you know this pattern. Uh, you get the flat, dull shot. Somewhere in your intuition you say, I, I know I need to extract more, and that's gonna fix this problem. Um, so that's, that's one of the first and, and biggest lessons you can really learn with the refractometer is that uh, it's not so linear, it's not so simple. Um, do we, are we ready with the tasting or how long, how far are we, if not five minutes? Okay, very good. So uh, I, I kind of confess, I don't, I don't love these charts. I find them very confusing. So, so don't be intimidated by all the, all the things on the screen. The gist of it is that that diagonal green line represents a water to grounds ratio. So let's say you choose something like 17 to one, meaning that the water for every 17 grams of water, you're using one gram of coffee grounds. Once you've chosen that ratio, your extraction and strength are going to land somewhere on that line. If you choose the ratio differently, the, the diagonal line will shift, okay? So we're on that line, we make a shot, uh, or, or whatever we're brewing here, and we end up at that red dot. And the red dot says we've extracted at about uh, um, 19% and about uh, 1.25 strength. So <clears throat> all this really tells you, it tells you where you are in the, on this map, and it also tells you that if you grind a little finer, you're gonna climb up that green line. And if you grind a little coarser, you're gonna go down the green line. So basically, once you've chosen a ratio, strength and extraction go in lockstep up and down. Um, so it's actually a really simple thing. It looks a little confusing. Um, those boxes are uh, recommended zones from various coffee organizations. So SCAE would recommend the green box, SCAA recommends the blue box, and the purple one, this graph was uh, invented by, uh, well, it was updated, shall we say, by uh, Vince Fidelli, who used to work for George Howell Coffee Company, and now he has VST, and that was sort of their target zone, was the, the purple box. So any questions so far? Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm sorry for the math. This is the, the other way to look at how to, how to look at extraction. Uh, there is an app for the phone, which is wildly popular because most people don't like doing math. Um, the app is great. You don't necessarily need it. You can also just um, use a simple calculation. And the way it works is that you take your TDS number, you take your strength, and you multiply it by how much coffee you brewed, in the case of, of drip coffee or espresso, and the result is the extracted mass. So in this case, if you had a shot and your TDS is 11%, like it says, and your, your brewed uh, coffee, your shot weight basically was 40%, uh, 40 grams, 11% times 40 grams is 4.4 grams. So what that means is that you started out with 20 grams in the portafilter basket, 4.4 grams of that dissolved into your cup, okay? And now we take that extracted mass, we divide it by the, the dry dose of 20, and we end up with an extraction percent, which was 22. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, if you really, really hate math, just forget this completely and use the app, it'll still work. Um, but this is, this is the gist of how it works. Um, technical note for those of you who use the app, you might try this and you might say, huh, my calculation is a couple of tenths of a percent off of what this gives me. Um, and that's because the app has some uh, preset parameters for carbon dioxide and moisture content of the grounds, which you can choose. And when you, when you take them off of zero, uh, it moves the calculation a bit. It's kind of a trivial point. It's not that important. What is important is whether you use certain presets or whether you just leave them at zero and do it this way, that you're just consistent. Because the, the bad news is that if, if you're measuring extractions and your friend at some other cafe with a different grinder is measuring extractions, your numbers may not agree. Okay, and that's not a bad thing, it's not a problem. It just makes it a little more complicated. So 
if your friend uh, says, oh, you know, with, with my grinder and such, you know, I love this coffee at 19.5, and you're saying, well, I'm using the same coffee with a different setup, and I'm loving it at 20%, uh, it could be the grinder, that because the, the grind particle size distribution kind of affects what the best extraction is. And it could also be that you're measuring with slightly different presets, and the numbers should come out differently. So there is no universal in the industry. Nobody's ever going to come to you and say 20.2% is the best extraction for all coffees or for any particular coffee. That's not possible to say, because even with the same grinder, as the burrs get dull, your ideal extraction level will shift. So uh, there's, there's a lot of moving parts. So again, that doesn't invalidate all this, just makes it a little bit complicated and hazy, but if you just forget all that and you say, with my grinder in my shop, I am going to stay internally consistent with my measurements and what I like, then, then you'll be great. Okay, any questions on that? Because I know that's a little bit confusing.